Obviously, the purpose of today's uh, press conference is uh, to discuss Saluki basketball. Uh, we have made the decision that uh, Chris Lowry will not return as the head men's basketball coach. I would like to take the opportunity to thank Chris uh, for his service. 14 years as a player, as an assistant, as, an, as a head coach. He was part of seven NCAA tournament teams at Southern Illinois University, and I perso personally appreciate all of his effort for all that time that he spent in trying to make us uh, a tremendous ball club. Uh, we did make the decision to uh, not retain coach, um, and there were several factors that went involved. I will outline some of them. Um, certainly, we had seen a declining success in our academics, um, and I'm, I'm proud to, uh, to say that this last class, this last term, was definitely an uptick, but there was a, a definite decline in our academics uh, for several semesters. Uh, we certainly had poor player retention um, for many classes, and I think that led us to some of the positions that we're in today. Um, certainly a loss of season ticket holders, uh, individual game tickets, as well as revenue was a factor, and quite frankly, a general malaise around the basketball program in the entire community. Uh, we believe that Saluki basketball is the epicenter of our entire athletic program, and it's of critical importance that it return to prominence immediately. A little bit about the search process. We will begin immediately on a national search. We have a very solid committee of individuals to assist me with this. Uh, we have a current Saluki head coach. We've got a former player and very experienced and successful university and community individuals. So I think that we put together a good team uh, that will help me select the next men's basketball coach. Now as we begin the search, we'll focus on a coach with the following characteristics, but certainly not limited to. Uh, a tremendous focus on academics. That's a big key for us. Uh, having a positive attitude with our student athletes. The ability to recruit character and talented players that fit their style of play. A very strong communicator, somebody that can communicate with our kids. A relentless recruiter and somebody who's willing to be the, the willingness to be the face of Saluki basketball in our community, in our region, and in our institution. Now, with our history of success, NCAA tournaments, with the facilities that we've built for Saluki Way, and with the talented group of youngsters and returners that we have, I have no doubt that a quick return to the top of the MBC is possible. And I also see this as one of the top jobs, not only in the MBC, but in the Midwest in total. I would expect to attract a tremendous candidate. Uh, I would also like to take this time to thank the fans uh, for their support and their patience through this transition. Uh, so thank you very much from the entire administration as well as myself. And at this point in time, I would be more than happy to open it up for any questions. Mara, can you give us kind of a timeline? I mean, did this happen last night, this morning, or you know, how did it kind of go with Chris? Yeah. I think we've been consistent. And we said at every single sport, we would wait for the season to be concluded before we render a final judgment. Now, obviously, during the season, I think um, you know many people can formulate their opinions on how things are going, things like that. But I certainly wanted to respect the process. Certainly wanted to respect our student athletes as well as our coaching staff, as well as an individual who gave an awful lot of years to this program and not render judgment in the media, things like that, and take the focus off what the kids are trying to do, what the coaching staff is trying to do. And I certainly would never want to undercut whether our kids or our coaching staff. Uh, but we made the decision. Um, you know, after the ball game that night, and um, you know, and, and we started to move forward this morning. How did Chris react? How did Chris react? Um, you know, Chris reacted very professionally. You know, it was hard. You know, Chris and I, um, we may not have seen eye to eye on everything, but we sure really never had a crossword with each other. You know, we always had very professional interaction. 
you know, I think I always wanted Chris to succeed, so it was certainly a difficult conversation. But at the same time, um, Chris loves this place. He's an alum. You know, he's won here, uh, so it wasn't easy. But at the same time, it was uh, it was cordial and it was uh, professional. Mary uh, Omar, are you at uh, liberty to, s to tell us who is on the committee? And you said there was a former head coach. Would that be? A current head coach right now for the Salukis uh, for another sport. Okay, and I, I'm going to choose not to uh, divulge the names of the committee. I will thank them at the end of this process, but I would hope that uh, by me not divulging them, they wouldn't get bombarded by you know a lot of folks. And I'm going to keep them anonymous for now. Thanks. Can you talk a little bit about the financial side of it, and you know how how you're going to buy it out? And Sure. I think a lot of people know that uh, Coach Lowry had two years left on his contract. Uh, since this is a personnel issue, I can't go into great detail, but it's my expectations that Chris's agent, as well as our general counsel, would begin discussions very soon on a negotiation. Uh, I can't speak to that right now. Obviously, it's just the day after, but that's what my hope would be, and um, you know, we'll we'll learn more about that later. Usually, a coach, an assistant. Uh, as of right now, um, you know, all the assistants um, are still with us. They are under contract. Uh, Ron Smith, um, while maybe not necessarily being the official interim coach as the associate head coach, he will take the lead with that group. Um, they will communicate with the players um, and with the recruits. I have spoken with the team. I have spoken with our incoming recruits as well as their family members. So we've, uh, you know, we've tried to do our due diligence uh, with that. Um, sure, you know, I hate to throw out a timeline because then if you don't reach it, everybody's asking every single day, are you disappointed? What's going on? Certainly, I'd like to have it wrapped up prior to the Final Four or around the Final Four. Now, that doesn't mean uh, we might not be aggressive and be able to do things quicker than that. But sometimes uh, we might be interested in individuals who are playing in the NCAA tournament, playing in the NIT tournament, and things might not allow for that. But we will try to, uh, we are not going to rush just to hire somebody uh, quickly. We're going to take our time, but we're going to put all of our energy um, right now into this search. So we're not going to, as I said before, dilly-dally around. We're going we're to move as fast as we can, but expeditiously as well. Any students, uh, student athletes express interest in maybe the program after this? Uh, not to me. Uh, I think we had a very positive uh, meeting uh, with the entire team. I think you'll have ability uh, to speak to some of the representatives, and I'm sure if you uh, if you go through Tom Weber, you know you'll be able to speak with uh, any of our current student athletes. But um, as you know, I'm explaining to them, you know, some of the real world decisions and some of the unpleasant things that we have to have to uh, do from time to time. Um, I personally sensed um, a lot of positivity. Um, in the locker room, a belief that there is a tremendous amount of talent in the locker room, and the fact that uh, it should not be too long before we can not only turn the ship around, but uh, get back up to where we all think uh, uh, Saluki basketball should be. Can you go back to the timelines briefly? What, what did, you, did you tell Chris about this last night after the game, or was it this morning? Or when exactly, when did you meet with him? Uh, Chris and I, we just talked briefly after the game. We set up a time to meet. Um, he came over to uh, my uh, room. Uh, we met briefly. Um, you know, I informed him of the news. I thanked him for everything. Um, we left very cordially. Uh, you know, and uh, and that's what happened. At approximately 9:30, 10 o'clock. In kind of branching off of that, is there a reason you felt like it had to be done today as opposed to Monday? Because you know, obviously, the, the valley with the tournament doesn't necessarily look fondly on the fact that, that it, this is happening during the tournament? Well, um, you know, we're proud members of the Missouri Valley Conference. Uh, my number one priority is Saluki basketball. Um, as much as we're a part of the team, um, you know, my focus is is on the Salukis. And um, if, a, if, you know, I always thought if, if uh, you know, I've made a decision and, uh, you know, my supervisors have uh, made that decision as well, there is no reason to wait. Uh, you know, so my focus is on us, not necessarily the tournament. And quite frankly, I don't think uh, uh, you know there are some people you reach out to. Um, so I do not see it as a as a disruption of the tournament. Well, you said you can't talk about how you, how you paid the buyout, but how can you afford to pay a high rate coach if you have to 
pay a million and a half dollars and, and the university's not doing well financially and you know the athletics department's about a twelve million dollar roughly budget. Well a couple things. Number one, we have not paid any buyout yet. Um, this is just um, you know this just happened less than 24 hours ago that we had our discussion. So it's my anticipation that both sides will get together, Chris's agent as well as our general counsel, and begin the negotiation process. Okay, so um, for me to speculate on what might come out of that negotiation um, would be a little premature, um, plus um, because I'm not, I'm not uh, positive that the two sides have even connected today. Um, so at the same time, I don't want to, I don't want to speculate on that. So we will, um, you know, whatever comes out of that, we'll fiscally, we'll deal with that. Um, but, but it's a little early to be discussing what the figure is when we don't know what that figure is. Have any donors expressed interest in helping the schools uh, with the buyout? Yeah, I can put that rumor to rest. Um, we have never, ever asked a donor for a dime to buy out a contract. Um, of our men's basketball coach. That has never occurred. No one has ever approached me for that as well. Okay, so you can, you can put that down. Will you look outside the so-called Saluki family and make a new, a new chapter now after this, after this record season this year? You know, I think the program is in, um, has such a strong foundation. Um, you know, we can talk about what's happened the last three years and maybe the, uh, you know, the house you know, doesn't look so great, but I know this that place has a strong foundation with with victories, with our facilities, things like that. I think we can uh, attract a quality coach. I would not want to henpeck ourselves just to folks you know, that were around our program, but certainly I think um, you know we're we're going to be open-minded and we're going to look at everybody around the country. Certainly, we would um, probably gravitate towards individuals in the Midwest, things like that. But um, yeah, we are not going to be. Uh, um, you know, having tunnel vision on any anybody specifically. We're going to keep an open mind. If somebody like Bruce Weber became available, who has been a coach here in the past, is that, I mean, can you rule him out, or is, is that somebody that you would potentially consider? Well, I wouldn't rule anybody out. I'd hate to speculate on coach, because he's still coaching. He's still the coach at U of I. Um, and, you know, I think once you join the Saluki family, whether you're an athletic director who's been here six years or somebody like Mike Reese that's been here 30, you know, I root for coach. I root for Matt Painter, you know, so I want him to do well. Um, so I would, I would hate to speculate on that because, uh, you know, I hope he wins big and finishes out his contract at U of I. You mentioned you had spoken with the incoming recruits. Has any of them expressed any problems? No, I wouldn't discuss it. That I would say, um, you know, I, where's Dan? Dan, I can discuss individuals, correct? Uh, I had a tremendous uh, conversation uh, with Bobo Drummond. Uh, great, uh, great youngster, and uh, he, uh, he has expressed uh, uh, excitement about the Salukis. I was gratified to hear that. I also reached out to Travis. You know, with me not meeting Travis on his recruiting trip, I was uh, away that weekend. So that's somebody I'd like to get to know a little bit more, and we kind of discussed where he's at. In his um, in his uh, in his timeline as well, but we did reach out to him. We said, hey, we're going to be. Uh, we, you know, we gave a consistent message. You know, we are going to be looking for a head coach. We know that we're going to attract a quality coach. We certainly want you uh, to get with them as soon as we have announced that person. I'm sure that the new coach will want to talk to the new recruits as soon as he uh, gets on board. So I would label them as very positive and informative conversations. Positive that comes out of a decision like this? Well, I think, um, you know, I've used the word malaise. You know, I used the, some other word that some people didn't like. Um, what was that? I can't remember. Um, but the reality is, you know, Saluki uh, or SIU Arena um, didn't have the same feel. You know, it didn't have the same crowds that were in there, the noise, the excitement level that was generated, you know, the thing that would permeate with all of it, it's, it's, it's never pleasant to change course, you know, especially when there's an alum involved who has been around this place and had done such a tremendous job as a player and assistant and head coach for a time. But at the same time, I also think it's a new day. You know, I think there's an opportunity to get back what we've had, whether it's in the 60s, whether it's what we had with Coach Heron whether it's what we had with Coach Weber and Coach, Coach Painter and Coach Lowry. I mean, just we've done it before. There is no way we can't do it again, and there's no way we can't do it quickly. 
especially given the facilities and things like that. So I think, you know, if there's a takeaway of being positive, this is a tremendous job. We've got tremendous kids coming back, and we're going to have a tremendous group of candidates who are interested in this position who I think can lead us back to the top of the MVC and beyond. I know it's only been a couple hours, obviously, since the news kind of got out, but have you been able to get a sense at all from boosters or anybody calling you, just their reactions? Um, I haven't really had time to check my email. Obviously, it comes in on the phone, but I've kind of been focused on, uh, um, you know, we met with the assistants this morning. I attended the, uh, uh, the president's uh, Missouri Valley Hall of Fame breakfast where Connie Price Smith was inducted, came right back, um, stopped at the house to get a change of clothes, uh, met with the players, and then came right here. So I haven't really um, been able to, to get on the phone or email too much. Dear. Where there's been a lot of focus on uh, the length of the contract, the amount of contracts, and the perceived lack of protection the university had uh, when it came to actual performance on the floor. How does that affect the next contract negotiations for you guys and, and where you go from here? Yeah. Well, you know, I take I, this is universal. I mean, when things go well, um, you know. There's a lot of backslap, and when they don't, there's a lot of arrows. We, we totally get that because we're in athletics. The reality is, you know, when we did the contract, it was very well received because we wanted to make sure we locked up Chris. And obviously, we're standing here today because, you know, it didn't work out the way we anticipated. I'll say this to answer your question. You know, we will um, be getting back to contracts of a fiscal nature that's a little more um, what we can bite off, okay? Um, I think, you know, with the prolonged six straight NCAA tournaments, things like that, arguably maybe the greatest season in Saluki basketball history with 29 wins, a number 11th ranking, you know, there was a huge desire uh, from everybody included to make sure we locked up the coach because we sure did not want another person taking our coach. Uh, but I think the reality is, is uh, maybe the mindset's changed a little bit that, hey, if, it's a good thing if people are interested in our coach, and while it might not be the best thing if coaches leave like Coach Weber or Coach Painter, you know, our job will be to get the next one of those versus doing everything we can. You know, financially, we may not be able to compete, especially in this economy and with the state's economy and things like that. So I see us getting to be a little more um, uh, back to the kind of contracts that we used to offer from a financial standpoint. But nevertheless, we still want to remain competitive. Um, and I think with the facility upgrades, things like that, I think that is that value added that can go along with the contract to, to really attract a top candidate. And to follow up on that, obviously when you make that signing for seven years, that you don't expect to be at this point, but there was no protection if you got to this point. Um, we've seen places where uh, they say a coach's contract is 10 pages longer than everybody else's for that, and it didn't seem like that was the Will that be a point moving forward? I think we will certainly offer. I think one thing with the with the finances, they'll be they'll be significantly different. Okay, but at the same time, certainly, yeah, we will look to revamp the contracts, offer more protections, things like that, structure them differently. Um, but I will remind you, at the time, that's. Uh, you know, in a negotiation process, that's what the other side wanted. So you know, it's. Um, when you're negotiating a contract, you don't always get everything you want. Um, you know, sometimes you're negotiating with somebody who's a very hot commodity, and, and you have to give in a little here, they have to give in a little here. So I do think um, we will definitely offer more, you know, more protection in the future. What was the last straw, Mario, for this decision? Chris had similar problems last year, losses, player retention. What was, the, was there a game? Was it the Wichita State game? Was there a moment? Earlier in the season before it was over that you're like, maybe I need to think about making a decision. Uh, I, you know, I think that would be a little short-sighted to say there was one moment that was the tipping point. I think the reality is we knew, um, and I'll speak for myself, that we were going to have a lot of freshmen this year and some junior college kids who are always going to have a transition period. We made the decision to, um, I'd say, soften the schedule up a little bit. Um, as you can tell, you know, we've got the, the, the lowest strength of schedule in RPI, so we did that for a reason. We knew that we were going to have some, um, you know, some young student athletes out there, and we would try to, to, you know, give them some confidence from the get-go. We did not anticipate the uh, some couple of injuries, legal situations, um, academic situations, which forced us to play young players um, maybe too much 
maybe too soon, did not allow us to redshirt the players. So I'd almost say from the get-go of the year, we didn't get off on the right foot again. And that was really disappointing um, because I thought, hey, even with all the um, you know, the past disappointment, I was hopeful that, hey, this year, even though we had some young kids and even though we might take our lumps, maybe we'll go into November with a full core of folks. And that didn't happen. And instead of gelling in maybe November or December, we ended up, you know, finally getting a full complement of folks in December or January. And that was what I think was, if there's a take the most disappointment for me. Mark, there's a lot of people that don't follow athletics and care about athletics. What would you have to say to them that they say, wow, you're just wasting a lot of money here? Well, I will say this. Um, we don't know what that money is yet because, you know, once again, um, you know, the two sides need to come together and talk. Um, certainly in athletics, um, there is a cost of doing business. Um, and it is a big business to the athletic department, to the institution. You know, I look at the finances from just two years ago. You know, we're down $500,000 in ticket revenue, season ticket and individual game tickets. We're also down about $200,000 in the scholarship fund, which is what we feel is directly tied into the men's basketball program. So um, I would say that, hey, you know, it is a big business um, at times. And, um, you know, while the decision is made and while some of the finances, when we find out what they are, might be different than what we've ever dealt with here before, you know, we've changed the game a little bit too. You know, when you go to all those straight tournaments in a row, when you build these huge facilities, you attract coaches and um, you attract coaches that people are very interested in. And if you want to retain them, you're going to have to pay for their services. How much did Chancellor Chang and President Bouchard have to say in what happened? Yeah, well, I report directly to the Chancellor. So she certainly was, was kept in the loop. And she, um, you know, I talked to her. She obviously spoke with not only uh, President Bouchard, but the board as well. So I think everybody was in unison with the decision.